Wilderness is a resource which can shrink but not grow. The creation of new wilderness in the full sense of the word is impossible. Aldo Leopold, co-founder of the Wilderness Society. Wilderness means escape to me. Wilderness means the opportunity to slow down, to relax, to see the world through a different lens. It is one of the few things left in the world that can bring human beings back into an understanding of where they fit into the whole. I think my daughter once said uh, the, the exciting thing uh, about the wilderness for her is that it's dangerous. <laughs> I'm from Tennessee, and it's neat for me to recognize that the origins of the wilderness study are in Tennessee. Actually, four forestry-related guys, uh, Bob Marshall being the principal one, who were going to a forestry conference in Norris, Tennessee. They got agitated about the way in which the Forest Service was managing wild places in 1934. They pulled off by the side of the road and sat down and wrote out the charter for the Wilderness Society. Formally chartered in 1935, the Wilderness Society quickly becomes the country's leading public lands conservation organization. We're very clear about what we do. Uh, the Wilderness Society protects wilderness, uh, and inspires Americans to care for our wild places. A quarter of the land in the United States, 635 million acres, is publicly held and belongs to the American people. We don't debate that these lands are, should be available for multi-use. We just debate that every acre doesn't need to be developed for oil and gas or available for off-road vehicle use or for mining. There are some places that are simply too wild to drill, too special to fragment. The National Park Service believes that healthy parks, healthy wild areas, are part of healthy ecosystems. The Wilderness Society has been effective at creating forum and venues to bring economic interests, government entities, uh, nonprofit organizations together to find common ground so that we can have um, a sustainable future and preserve these places for future generations. A critical component of the Wilderness Society's mission is to inspire Americans to care about our wild places. Well, one of the things we're doing is a new campaign called My Wilderness. You know, we're trying to help people realize that Wilderness is everywhere. It's, it is easy to get to, and it is you know, just a day trip or an afternoon hike or something like that. It doesn't have to be you know, the week-long expedition with loaded backpacks or something like that. My Wilderness is, is our way of, of trying to let people tell their personal stories about what wilderness means to them. I think it's a really critical time for or organizations that, that steward wild places to look at how they're connected to young people, and particularly to urban young people and to um, young people from communities of color. A challenge of great importance to the Wilderness Society is to get young people to connect with and care about the outdoors. We did a great program last summer uh, where we linked up with the YMCA and with uh, a few additional resources teamed up with the Y to take uh, some kids from inner city DC out on the Appalachian Trail. And we'd, we'd started off on the first day and we're climbing up uh, a hill and we get to the top and there's, there's an overlook. And there's a lot of graffiti on the rocks and some trash over on the side. And, when I first saw it, I was incredibly disappointed because, you know, here's these kids' first, you know, 
vista experience on the Appalachian Trail and, and it's ruined by this trash and graffiti and, and they didn't see any of it. They were able to look past the, the minor deficiencies and the things that can be cleaned up and really see the, the natural splendor for what it was. Our work is not done. There are places across the West in the United States that require really serious permanent protection. There are places that are really under threat. We have to keep these areas as pristine as possible. And if man keeps going the way that he does, we're not going to have a beautiful place on this planet. We try to inspire other people to care about these areas that that millions of people use for getting their clean drinking water, for getting clean air. My hope for my kids is that those of us here today, that we work together so that the experiences that my kids have, hiking, climbing, canoeing, uh, river rafting, that their children will be able to do that too. You know, I, I grew up in the West. I was born in Texas and I was raised in California and Arizona. And I feel so lucky to be connected to those places. And um, I also feel a responsibility, um, not only because I want those places to be around for future generations for my kids and, and so on, but also because um, in those places I can find a piece of myself, a piece of my history, um, because I know that those lands contain the story of who I am. From the hardwood forests in the east, stunning deserts in the southwest, snow-capped peaks in the Rockies, to old-growth forests in the Pacific Northwest and tundra in Alaska, the Wilderness Society has been at the forefront of nearly every single major public lands victory since 1935. As Howard Zahnizer, the former executive secretary of the Wilderness Society and the author of the landmark Wilderness Act of 1964 states, we are not fighting progress, we are making it. We are not dealing with a vanishing wilderness, we are working for a wilderness forever. <laughs>